It is a bye week, but Jonathan and I are still here, still putting in the work, still bringing you West Virginia Mountaineer football talk and content, and we have a lot to talk about despite it being a bye week. Welcome to episode 14 of the Golden Blue Breakdown Show with myself and Jonathan Martin. Jonathan, how are you doing tonight, man? Hey, I'm good, Coos. We said last uh, last week, um, yep. like a good marriage, man, we're here through yep. the good, bad, and the ugly. Um, we thought we might take a little bit of a vacation this week on the bye week, but um, it never stops. News never stops. It so, never stops, man, especially uh, in Mountaineer country. Here we are. So I don't... I don't know that we thought the bye week discussion of the Golden Blue breakdown would be um, as newsworthy as maybe a game week, but here we are. That's right. Here we since are. we since we met last, obviously West Virginia won a game against Arizona, yep. which we will talk about here just briefly. Uh, before we do that, though, I got to give a quick shout out to the channel sponsor. So. We'll be back in about eh, 35, 40 seconds. Since 1931, the attorneys at Katz, Cantor, Stone Street, and Buckner have been the voice for victims who have suffered serious injury or death. They have a fierce passion for truth and justice and a sincere compassion for those who have been wronged by others. Whether you have been in a car accident or fighting with an insurance company or you or a loved one has suffered serious injury or death due to medical negligence, we will ensure your voice is heard loud and clear. Cats, Cantor, Stone Street, and Buckner will ensure there is justice for all West Virginians because we are your lawyer, your voice. Visit us at yourlawyeryourvoice.com. All right, so thank you for sticking around for that, and thank you again to Cats, Cantor, Stone Street, and Buckner for helping us keep the lights on. If you need a medical malpractice or personal injury attorney in West Virginia or Virginia, Give them a call or look them up at yourlawyeryourvoice.com. So let's recap the Arizona game, Jonathan, real quick, and then we'll get into the news of the week. Uh, just what are your initial thoughts and, about West Virginia's 31-26 win over the Wildcats out west? Yeah, so good win. Um, we'll start there. Any win's a good win, uh, especially when you're in conference play. Um, you know, we discussed on the show last week, we were, we were curious to see how it was going to play out. Uh, you know, there were injuries. Um, there were backs against the wall, seasons on the line. Um, and West Virginia traveled over 2,000 miles to play with a backup quarterback, uh, a backup left tackle. Um, Jaheim White was back, um, but had missed the second half of the week prior. So there were a lot of questions. Um, Gosh darn it, Kuzi tried her best to give it away. I think it got a little bit closer towards the end um, than maybe we would have preferred, but a win's a win. Um, you know, the, the highlight, obviously, I felt like offensively West Virginia looked really smooth. Um, we got word late that Nico Markle um, was going to start, and uh, boy, he didn't disappoint, did he? Um, not. He did not disappoint. The, the offense looked smooth. It was nice to see – you know, I think we both felt that him being thrown in on the second half of Kansas State wasn't the real Nico Markiel that we thought we would see, although it had been in smaller spurts. Uh, we felt like that wasn't him. So it was good to see him get a, a, a full week of practice. He made some throws, coups that you just thought, we've been missing that, uh, specifically sliding up in the pocket, hitting Ray for a deep touchdown. Um there's just some really good balls that he threw. He still runs the footballs a little bit more physical, but it just seemed to be a shot in the arm. So uh, a win is a win. A win's always good, especially in conference play. So it was good to see. It was a good win. Yep. It was a good win. Absolutely, I agree. Uh, gets the team back to four hundred, back to five hundred rather at four and four. Yep. Puts them at three and two in conference play. They're still te technically, technically, I guess. Have a shot, outside shot at a Big 12 championship, but, I mean, it's like one in a gazillion. I don't know. They need a ton of help yeah. and some some almost miracles to happen. Yeah. Uh, don't let Neil Brown – I mean, Neil Brown doesn't apparently feel that way, but which we may get to that. <laughs> no. Yeah. But uh, but anyway, yeah, big win. I was really impressed with Nico. A lot of fans now on you know think feel like Nico should be the guy going forward. Uh, speaking sure. of that, I do want to say real quick, you know, Coach Brown, he's never come out and – and flat out said that Garrett has a concussion. So we don't know for 100% certainty that that's the case. Correct. But but he did use the word head injuries after the yeah. K-State game. 
So the speculation out there is that it's a it's a head injury slash concussion. And he said it in Monday in his press conference that Garrett is still struggling. So I wish Garrett – whatever it is, if it's a concussion or whatever, I wish Garrett a quick recovery. Hope he's okay. Uh, if it is a concussion, we know those things, you know, can be serious at times. So hopefully yeah. it's nothing uh, super serious. Wish him a quick recovery. I love the young man. He's he's an awesome, awesome mountaineer. Yeah. Um, and he's going to have a successful future, whatever he, whether it's football or not. But I want to say that first uh, sure. to make sure that any criticism or anything is not personal at the individual. It's about, about play, but I'll be honest with you. Nico's performance is one of, is the best, one of the best performances from a quarterback from a throwing standpoint I've seen yeah. in a while. Yeah. I, I, I don't have the stats in front of me. I want to say he was 18 for 22. Um, so. Yep, that sounds right. I don't, I don't, um, I don't I'll pull him up as you're talking. Uh, but it's important to note, though, Coos, if that, if that number is right, 18 to 22, and I think that might be right. One pass that was a option was actually deemed incomplete. So now our four incompletions go down to three. Uh, and then he missed Cole Taylor across the middle, I think it was, in a very tight window that, that while it wasn't the best throw, it, it, it actually, looking back on it, maybe prevented an interception. So it was mm-hmm. a tight window. So now our four goes to three, which goes to two, um, if my math is correct on him being 18 to 22. You, you okay. are correct. I'm looking at it now. <laughs> okay. So, so realistically, minus – um, well, let's just even take the the option play out, eighteen to twenty one, because um, it they, he he wasn't necessarily throwing a wide open players every time either. There no, were some not. really good throws, um, and I kind of alluded to it a minute ago. Um, I was impressed more maybe with the with the pocket presence. Yes, um, that is something that you kind of acquire throughout playing time throughout a season it's that comfort level um and he's not had that Mm-mm. um especially with a new uh tackle <laughs> um johnny williams filling in for Wyatt milam so there were some moving parts there um and he i was i think just as impressed as i was with his throws and his accuracy i was impressed with just his level of comfort um and calmness in the pocket so it was really really good to see and and encouraging going forward. Um, listen, I echo your comments about Garrett. I've said plenty of times, if you've followed me on social media, he's a leader. He's a warrior. He's a fighter. Who's the heck with football? He does so much off the field with W, mm-hmm. with Medicine, Children's Hospital. Um, he he is extremely active in the community. Um, it's bigger than football right. with a lot of them, especially with Garrett. So we, we certainly, from us, um, we hope it's not the last we see of him, right? Absolutely. Um, and um, heck, I think if we can work this thing out right, we can maybe have him and Nico both on the field. And then I'm really excited. So, yeah. um, but but we are in a situation where we had Gare, uh, had Nico last week. I feel pretty strongly as it sits today, recording this. That's probably where you're going to see it next week because even Neil Brown said. Garrett's not quite there. And I think he even made a comment that if they played this Saturday, Garrett would not be able to play. Um, So excited to see how it goes um, moving forward to next week with Cincinnati. Agreed. I was also impressed with the way, and I don't want, we'll move on to some, another position in a minute, but with Nico, one more thing I want to stress, he was going through his progressions. Yeah. Getting hit in his check downs. And that's the one thing Garrett has struggled with. I mean, Neil's even openly talked about that. Yeah, he's some he hits. He might look at his first read, maybe a second, and if they're not there, he take he gets antsy and takes off. Nico didn't do that, man. He was hitting checkdowns. He was hitting little short, uh, short routes. Uh, yeah. His accuracy across, you know, in the short and intermediate stuff was was there. The, the pass down the sideline to Traylon Ray. Oh, Traylon Ray had had a guy behind him and a guy to his left. Yeah, sort of, sort of to his left and and, and in front of him. Nico put the ball over his back shoulder towards the sideline where nobody could get it but him. I mean, it was, yeah, and he stepped up in the pocket 
the pressure was coming. He sensed it. You, you talked about his pocket presence. He stepped up. He slid up a, a foot or two, just enough room to make the throw, put it on the money. He 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 knows when to throw a change up versus a fastball. Yeah. I mean, he – Coos, what about the throw to Hudson Clement fourth down in the, in back, the back of the end, end zone? zone. Yep. Um, like you said, he, he couldn't have fit his toe in by another inch. And that throw was placed to where one person and one person only could catch it. Yep. And that was – well, it was Clement. So, another throw. Who made uh, a great catch and play, by the yeah. way. Oh, Kudos oh, to his yeah. teammates for making these plays as well. Sure. And Jalen Anderson. How about Jalen Anderson coming off the bench cold yeah. to steal the game with a big third or a big third Huge. down catch there in the fourth quarter? Just Huge. some really good performances. Uh, but there was also some performances that we were not so good. Um, the pass defense continues to be a problem, Jonathan. Yeah. Uh, what, what, I mean, just, man. And, and matter of fact, which we'll get to it, it may have cost a coach their job. Yeah. So what, what are your thoughts on the, on the past defense, man? Anything? Um, yeah, it, 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 yeah, you used a great word. It was a problem. It's the easiest way to say it. Um, it was a problem. Um, it, it's been a problem. And, um, you know, it literally did take a third string running back making a catch out. I, I think if we're being honest, um, if Arizona gets that football again, I'm fearful that it would have went the other direction. And, and to Neil, put it admitted, kind of like, Neil admitted that in his press conference Monday. Yeah, he 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 did. Um, you know, it was another um, it, it was another game, and 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 I'm not just saying this. Neil's talked about this um, during the season. It, it was just putting players in a position to not succeed. Yep. And as a as a coach and a defensive coordinator, again, we'll talk about that. Um, it was just another example of what cannot happen. Yep. And it got to the point where Arizona knew it. And, I, you know, they had to be thinking, what the heck? <laughs> you all aren't, aren't correcting this? Like, what? you, you know, um, so yeah, just it, it, it. I'm just thankful that West Virginia took as much time that they did with the ball in their hands. And you know, hey, uh, I'll even say kudos to you. I think last week in our our episode, I think you even spoke about one way to keep that offense for Arizona off is for West Virginia to use that clock, be successful running the ball, be patient, but be aggressive. So mm-hmm. kudos to you too. You you nailed that one and. Um, I didn't see you on the sidelines uh, Saturday, but you you drew that up pretty well. Um, and so, yeah, the defense is a concern. It's been a concern, um, and it 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 almost come back to get them. Yep, it did. I, and I was watching the guy. I was out of town when I was watching the game uh, from from the hotel room, man. And it was, uh, you know what? And it's sad. You know, here's the sad part, Jonathan, is I was expecting it. Yeah. Arizona was coming back, and I thought, yeah, this there's too much time on the clock. This is just I've seen this too many times, and I was not I was not even mad about it, man. Yeah, that that's well, that's that's where we are. Yeah, and it's funny because I everybody knows uh, if you follow me on X uh, for most games, uh, there are a few exceptions. Um, I'm live tweeting, man, um, through through it all, um, and I it's like I was saying. I feel comfortable. Then it's like I'm not comfortable. And then I would say I'm comfortable again. And then it was like I'm not comfortable. And it was just back and forth, back and forth. And so, um, yeah, it, we, you're right. We expected it, right? I mean, we knew it was coming. Um, and we're just – we're fortunate that – I guess if we're being honest, we're fortunate that Arizona didn't have any more time. <laughs> they ran out of time. But at the end of the day, it's a win. And it was a good win, especially with your back against the wall, down a few people. Um, so it always always feels better waking up Sunday morning to a win. It does. It does. Uh, puts you in a much better mood, right? <clears throat> it does. Uh, then, because of – well, I don't want to say because. Because of the poor performance of the def- defense, spe- specifically the passing defense this season – uh, and I'm assuming probably some of the pressure that's been put on Coach Brown and, and this staff and this program, a coaching change was made, announced yesterday. Uh, Jordan Leslie has now been ousted as defensive coordinator, and they have decided to promote linebackers and special teams coordinator Jeff Koontz into his place. 
bypass Shadon Brown, who was the co-defensive coordinator, by the way, and, and secondaries coach, <clears throat> to go with Jeff Coons. So, Jonathan, I, I did a sh- brief show on this yesterday after the news broke, uh, but I haven't had a chance to get your thoughts on it. So go ahead and, and let us know what, how you feel about, about that move. Yeah, so um, I do want to say first that we 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 talked about Garrett and and um, and his injury. Nothing personal when we discuss changes at a position. I would carry over to the firing of a head coach. Listen, it's been it's it's no secret that 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 Jordan Leslie's performance as defensive coordinator, not just this year, um, but specifically this year, I guess, hasn't been the best. But uh, he's a good man. Uh, his father. A husband, and so um, regardless of what you think about his his performance as a coach, uh, obviously we want to be respectful and choose our words wisely. Having said that, um, I think it was time. Who's right? I mean, um, it it just um, it it has been an issue all season. Uh, in fact, if if you'll go back, and I started to do this today. If you'll go back and look at the post conferences or the the post game press conferences and the Monday weekly press conferences um, on multiple multiple times uh, this season, Neil Brown talked about how it's just not good enough. It's got to get better, um, and it started early in the season of it's got to get better, and then it graduated to. Um, it got a little bit more, I don't know that touchy is the right word, but it got a little bit more serious. It cut a little bit deeper mm-hmm. every week. If you'll remember, Neil started talking about people just were not putting them in positions to be successful. Schematically, we don't make sense combined with our personnel. And then it moved to putting Leslie up in the box. And then it just kept going back to we're not good enough. We're not making plays. Uh, we've got to be better. It's got to be better. And and it really caught my attention after the game against Arizona, where in the post game Neil was kind of acted out of character in a bit, where mm-hmm. he went at a a coach without going by name, but it was obvious, uh, and said, "Too long. We've got to get better." So. Yeah. I think you saw it coming. Um, Leslie didn't help himself. Listen, because he, he, he didn't help himself. Mm. You know, if you go back to the clip where he said easy fixes, everybody knows the clip of easy fixes. Probably wasn't the smartest move. <laughs> um, um, so I think it was time. Um, I think the curious thing here now is where does West Virginia go um, on the defensive side of the ball? Um, it It is – Mindful to note that Leslie is the defensive coordinator. Um, most of the problem on the West Virginia defense is in the secondary. And as you noted, Shadon Brown, co-DC as well, was passed over. So there is some belief that West Virginia will continue to look at making changes. Um as we're recording this, I feel like if they were to do a second move, it would have maybe been done by now, but but we'll see in the coming days. Yeah. Um, but it is, listen, in my line of work, if I was the co-whatever um, and my boss was was let go and someone else overtook my title, I'm thinking, wait a second. Um, so if we're to believe and, and to read the room, there's some concern there. So Absolutely. now, yeah. and I'm not trying to ramble here, but I guess then, then going forward, uh, the question is what happens? We've got four games left in the season. It's a favorable schedule. It's Cincinnati on the road, Baylor, UCF at home, um, and then at Texas Tech. Outside of maybe UCF, um, Three of those four teams, they like to throw the football. That's a weakness for West Virginia. Yep. Personnel is not going to change, even though Coons is in, Leslie's out. Personnel is not going to change. So the big question mark is, will we see a difference? Um, that remains to be seen. I don't yeah. know what you benefit from it outside of just 
publicly, you're saying, here we are. I acknowledge it. I'm addressing it. I'm going to try and fix it. Um, but to be determined, Coos, if we see results on the field. Agreed. Well said, man. I like I like the implementation of Coons. I mean, I, I, obviously I don't know a whole lot about him, but when you look at his history, man, he's coached under Mac Brown. Yeah. He's coached at Auburn under Tommy Tuberville. I think he may have coached a little bit under Gene Chiswick. I mean, he, he's been at Ole Miss. He's been at Cincinnati. Uh, he was co-DC at Cincinnati at one time. Um, it was before Luke Fickle, I believe. Yeah. But, and I mean, can I he, just real quick say yeah. his special teams unit against Arizona looked really good. Shame on, on me for did. not saying yeah. anything about that. They looked really, <laughs> really did. good. So. Fake punt touchdown or fake field goal touchdown. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and, and look at the, and his, his special teams unit across the board have improved over the last couple. I mean, a couple of years ago, special teams was the Achilles heel of the team in a lot of sure. ways. Sure. Sure. And now it's become a strength of the team in a lot of ways. So, yeah. Uh, you know, Preston Fox has done a good job returning punts. Uh, the kickoff coverage has been really good. We've got, we've had good kickers the last few several years with Casey Legg and now Michael Hayes. You know the the holders, the punters have all done fantastic, and yeah. all of that stuff's important, man. Sure, it doesn't get talked about a lot, but it's important. And yeah, his special teams have have they look like they look like they're well coached, and and I think his linebackers look well coached. I mean, do they make their certain mistakes? Absolutely, but they're young. They're a young group, man. And when you look, and, and he's, I'm sure he's played a huge role in, in recruiting most of those guys. Yeah. And it might be the most talented group on the team, or at least yeah. as far as one position room goes. So, yeah. outside of maybe and, running back. And it does make sense with him on the linebacker side of it, too, Coos, because what, what happens with the linebackers, right? They're familiar with how the defensive line um, runs plays. Mm -hmm. they're they're familiar with the secondary they're kind of right there in the middle and they all kind of coexist right so um the belief amongst some people <clears throat> that that i have talked with believe even though he's focused a little bit more on the linebacker specifically he is intertwined with the defense as a whole and has a good sense um of the entirety of the defense so yeah, interesting to see what happens. Yeah, I actually made the argument in my my show that you can make the argument at, as far as resume goes, he was more qualified to be DC than Jordan Leslie yeah. from the get go. Now he wasn't on the staff originally. He was, I think, he came a year later, maybe. But the, nonetheless, I mean, if you look at his resume, Jordan Leslie had never been in a Power Four school ever yeah. in any capacity. So at least he has Power Four experience multiple times. So yeah. And I think yeah. that matters in today's game. I really do. Yeah, I do too. And so I think the question, and I don't want to get, I don't want to get too ahead, but I think the question now is, there, there's a short term thought process here, right? The short term mm -hmm. being the next four games. Um, there's a long term process here, um, and that would be, um, where do you go going forward? Um, it's going. It, it's it's going to be interesting to see what they do. Um, I think that um, I said last week um, that that I believe it was a mini five game now four season uh, for Neil Brown. Um, listen, everybody knows the heat's on, uh, so mm -hmm. it's important to finish strong. So while I still think it's important, I mean, listen, Neil can't go out and win one out of these last four games. Um, to be honest, I don't know that he can win two out of the four um, because they're already kind of discussing it's the favorable part of the schedule. And guess what happens when you don't win on the favorable part? It just makes it worse. Um, so it's a mini season now, five games now, four games for Neil. Uh, what happens um, if the defense all of a sudden just – performs better than they have, you know, the first eight games of the year. Is an argument there to keep Coons in a role and 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 work around that. Here's where I'm struggling. Um, I believe uh, that this is a move um, to try and keep Neil Brown for next year um, with the um, with the wording. Um, 
but but putting it out there that that the defense was the weakness and he took steps to correct it um that's the sense that i get is that's the that's the option if if they can win three out of their next four maybe get to a get to a bowl if they can somehow win eight or nine games he can say hey you know we did nine last year it wasn't the season we wanted but we went eight we went nine with the tough schedule we had a weak link we corrected it um and we make it higher mm -hmm. um I was asked a lot today uh, what my thoughts were about hiring internally for a, for a defensive coordinator. I'll just say internally. Um, I don't think you can take a coach who admittingly the pressure is on, Neil Brown, mm -hmm. and I don't think you can bring him back next year with all the heat surrounding him and this program and knowing that the defense is an issue and hire from internal. I think you've got to make a hire. Now, the, the argument there is who's coming here with Neil being potentially a lame duck. Yep. Um, it, it that, that, and that's a it, good it, question. Yeah, it is. And it hurt, them, I mean, it hurt them last year when they were trying to find an offensive coordinator. Yes. They were, they were, they were, hired, they were interviewing some people who had ties to West Virginia who didn't yep. take the job. Yeah. So I, I actually think while I sit here today, I think that the the, the firing and moving on from Jordan Leslie um, is is in hopes of finishing this season strong, getting to an eight or nine win, counting a bowl game, and making a hire to go to the fans and say, hey, it wasn't the year. It was a tough schedule. Goodness knows me and you do not like that. That's another topic of discussion. Yeah. But um, and say we we've addressed the the weakness in the room, um, and so uh, we'll we'll see. But at the but at, through all that, um, you have to finish strong. You you, yep. you you can't. I don't think. Listen, the the fans weren't letting you survive losing to. Iowa State and Kansas State at home. Because what do you think is going to happen if they lose to Baylor and UCF? <laughs> you know where I'm, you know where I'm going with that. Cincinnati even. Yeah. Um, and so if if you're hearing it off of those losses, and I just kind of meant specifically home losses. Yeah, I, I apologize. But, I yeah, no, no, you're good. But if, if you're losing, the fans were upset you lost to two top 25 yeah. teams at home. If you lose to Baylor – and and UCF at home, which at the time we're recording this is below you in the standings. Ooh, I don't know how you recover from that. Yeah, I, I don't. I, I'll be, Jonathan, I'm going to be honest with you, man. I don't know that Neil Brown can recover. I'm just being honest with you. I mean, outside of him going out next year, if they bring him back, and he goes out next year and, and wins a Big Twelve title, I'm not. I'm not sure it's recoverable at this point. Outside of that, because Regardless of how many coaches he fires, I just he, he six years in, no top twenty-five ranking, no only three wins over top twenty-five teams, and they weren't in the top twenty-five by the time those seasons ended. You you, you make comments that piss off the fan base seemingly about every week now. Yep. Uh, you, you you talk about you know, and we haven't even talked about the comments you made about wanting to get Alabama off the schedule. Uh, I mean, there's just been so many times, man, that, and, and all this stuff is going to start coming back, come, you know, you've got fans putting up billboards, wanting him fired, uh, creating that controversy. I mean, it's just the national, national media is picking up on that. You know, now we have Pat McAfee talking about this stuff Yeah, Good on point. ESP. We, we talked about how great that is for our program may not be so great for your program when you got all this crap going on. Right. Yeah. Uh, so it's just. It's in a the program's not in a good spot right now. It's it's a tough, tough. I do not, despite the salary, I do not envy Ren Baker right now. I really don't. He's got a tough job. I know he makes over a million dollars a year, but man, what a job he has right now to try to he's got to make a yeah. decision, man. And uh, and I'm sure he's got Gordon Gee as well in his ear to a, yeah. to a degree. Maybe not in his ear, but he has to answer to him. 
So there's just so much, you know, the, the financial piece of it, man, it's, it's, it's a tough spot. And I think you're right. I think they're, I think West Virginia, whether it be Neil, Neil and Ren, both, whatever, I think they're trying to find a way they're crossing their fingers and their toes and they're praying that they went out this year and they have these talking points they can use to yeah. justify bringing him back for 2025 because they mm-hmm. cannot, in their mind, cannot afford to pay that nine, whatever the buyouts, nine yeah. million dollar buyout or whatever it is. They can't afford it in their mind. Yeah. And on, and on top of the assist, on top of the assistance. Right. Yeah. yeah. And then the new, yeah, I, I, I put a question out today on X, uh, what everybody thought on a scale of one to 10, West Virginia, what that number would be to finish the last four games, three and one. Um, I kind of did that for a reason because seven seems to be the target. It seems to be the target. Yeah. Uh, if you can get the seven, that's a finish strong. Um, that's a finish strong. And then you got a potentially a bowl to get you that eight. Anything above that's seemingly what's well, matching last year. Mm-hmm. Um, and then with the, the changes on the defensive side of the ball, it's, it's, it's such a wild time. For this program, yep. You know, I had a conversation with somebody the other day, and and they they were actually I had kind of posed the question: Have we seen the fan base this divided? And there was a mm-hmm. lot of good discussion, and and what was really cool for me is some of it kind of was before before me, um, you know, when and, and especially before there was social media. And so when you have a conversation with this person, they said, have, have we ever seen a season go from an hour before game one, an hour, literally an hour before game one to where we are today? And if you go back and think about it, an hour before Penn State game, you were fresh off of an off season, right, of hype, nine wins, Pat McAfee in town. Do you remember the pictures of the the student mm-hmm. body um, just crammed <laughs> in the streets and in the sidewalks? You had Fox big noon kickoff. The place was packed. Go back an hour before kickoff. Machine Gun Kelly performing it outside yeah. the stadium. Yeah, and and then from that point to today, boy, it's been a wild ride. Yeah, <laughs> crazy. And, it, it, it is. And, and, and now here we are, coaches firing back and play by play commentators kind of making remarks and, 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 and coaches just saying things out of their mouth and billboards here and billboards there and coaches blocking people. It's just been, it's been crazy. Um, but um, you, that, I think where I'm going with that is that I, I, I'm with you. Um, Ren's got a full plate. And um, I will say that I do believe that the, 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 the hope is that Neil finishes strong. There's no termination there. Um, save some money, invest it in, in staff, specifically defensive staff, and get ready for next year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. Now, now is, that the, is that the answer that everybody's going to want? Nope. It, it's not. Uh, and the pushback on that, Coos, is going to be this isn't year two, it's not year three, it's not year four, it's a six, going to go into seven. That's the pushback, and I get it. But that's going to be the hope as we go down the final stretch of this season. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I, I you know, just based on the sense I get from what, what I read, what I hear, what they do not want to fire Neil Brown. No, they, no. They're, and they're going to do everything they can to not fire him. Yeah, whether that's good or not, I I don't know, but we'll see. Um, before we get into the next segment, I want to remind everybody to go check out at GB Breakdown underscore on X. It's the account we have for this for this chant for this show. Uh, also, Jonathan uh, is on X as well at Jonathan K Martin at J O N A T H A N K Martin. He does a lot of work over there. He puts out articles. He's always interacting with people. Uh, he has a, You can subscribe to him over there and get access to some of his behind-the-scenes stuff. So go check him out. Uh, you can find me also at Hoops from the Hills 
where I cover myself and a couple other folks over there cover West Virginia basketball. Um, I'm looking forward to that starting up here soon. Uh, might, next week, matter of fact. Yeah. So we're excited about that. But uh, so yeah, just and you can find myself on X two personally at Coos two hundred six. So come check us out. We'd love to interact with you, and uh, we appreciate everybody tuning in. Uh, the next segment of the show was one that we kind of decided last minute to do. Uh, Jonathan and I were talking, and, and you know, we we talked about how many times Neil Brown's kind of stepped in it or with his with his comments or said things that kind of tick us off, whatever. Um, and I don't know how many people picked up on this, but he was he did his typical United Bank playbook today with Tony Caridi, and I'm just going to play it real quick, and then Jonathan and I are going to react to it. Bank playbook. Tony Caridi along with the head coach of the Mountaineers. Second bye week of the season, last bye week of the season, and uh, just like the first one, it comes at a really good time physically, doesn't it? Yeah, we needed it, and just like last time, we're coming off a win, and then you're heading into a really important stretch of the season, and these four games in November are going to make or break our season. We still have a lot of football to play. We're right in the middle of the conference football race. You know, I think, I think our fans need to understand that. Um, and that was a huge win. Jonathan? <laughs> yeah. I'm going to let you roll with that one. Yeah, so I saw that today. Um, admittingly, at a time where I was pretty busy um, and occupied, and I think after after Neil said a comment there where you paused it, I listened for about another five or six seconds, and I thought, what? Um, <laughs> right in the middle of the race, our fans need to realize that. Um, I, I, I want to say first, I don't know his intention there. Um, and I'm not trying to make too big of a whatever out of that comment. But I think at best, we would agree, Neil's got to stop. I mean, he, 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 he just, it seems intentional. Um, his, are you having fun comments that went viral? He had to kind of backtrack. And then there was a comment about going out West, not playing at home for a month. And it's probably best. And then now it seems, yeah, it just seems that 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 we're right in the middle of the race. Our fans need to realize that. Um, and it wasn't prompted either. I mean, he he could have answered right. the question without making those comments. Yeah, yeah. You 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 could have said we're right in the middle of the race. We had a great a great win on the road. Uh, we're going to use the bye week to get better, and we cannot wait to get back out on the field at Cincinnati. There you go. I just did it for you, Neil. Yeah. <laughs> but hey, maybe, it maybe, he needs, maybe he needs to hire you as his PR. Uh, yeah. Person. I mean, it's not, it's not hard. It's not hard. Um, and so I went back and listened to it. And weirdly enough, just like when we would do our three, two, one segment, uh, we don't, we don't exchange notes. I promise. And crazy enough, you and I had the exact same thought. Now I think it kind of got lost in the shuffle today for a couple of reasons. Number one, um, it was tweeted from an account that that covers all athletics. Uh, there's not that much engagement there. So it wasn't out of like the football or nothing like that account. Number two, it's a bye week. And I think there is a little bit of oh, let's just take a break. And then obviously the big one, number three, is we're, uh, we're, we're fresh after Jordan Leslie. Um, and I think it kind of just got squashed a little bit. Um, although if you look there, there's a little bit of comments there. I just didn't love it. Yeah. I just think needs, at some point he, 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 he needs, gotta stop. He needs to keep the fan's name out of his mouth. That's why that's the first thing I that's what I was thinking about when you were talking. Yeah. Just stop talking about fans, man. Just don't even don't even mention fans. That is the last thing he needs to be about 99% of the fans hate your guts right now. Uh, yeah. And I, I'm I, they don't literally, but yeah, from a football perspective, they want you gone, right? So don't say that kind of stuff, man. It's yeah. just not good, and it's it's almost like he's rubbing it in our face to a, to an extent. Yeah, and 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 I would I would say, and, and you would know better. Um, but I think the 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 even the average fan probably knows West Virginia is not really right in the middle of the race. 
No. Um, <laughs> it, so it, it it just comes across. It, it it just comes across wrong. It just it it looks bad. It looks silly. It looks like you're just taking a jab, and it looks like in a way. And I'm not trying to overreach here, but it looks like you you just you don't understand your your fans' knowledge of where you sit eight games into the season. Um, I didn't like it. I didn't like it either. And I'll tell you, I just had another mm-hmm. thought as you were talking. I'll call it an epiphany. Is he desperate? It, does, it almost reeks of desperation to a degree as well, potentially. It's a great point. Um, it, 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 it's, a, it's a great point. It could just be that desperation cry of – you're just reaching. Yeah. Right. Um, you're just trying to find something. Um, you know, and it, we, we laughed or I laughed earlier about us not loving it. We've heard the tough schedule. Um, and, and I feel like every time you and I hear it, it's like nails on a chalkboard. But you um, said that. So, hey, yeah, there you go. We'll push the play button. On Saturday, you know, to go 2,000 plus miles away without three or four, uh, three of our four captains, you know, without a starting quarterback, without our starting left tackle, with a bunch of injuries. Um, I think it says a lot about our guys to go on the road against a team that was preseason top 15 and get a quality road win. So I'm really proud of them. Yeah. Uh, when you take a look at this week now, how do you run the balance of getting guys healthy, but at the same time staying sharp? Well, you have two different plans. So you have the first plan is for the guys that are playing week in and week out. And the emphasis there is, man, they need to get rested. They need to recover. And we need to get the injured guys, the ones that are capable of getting back, we get them back. And so, and I think hitting the mental reset is as important as any. This has been a grind of a season. It's been a really hard schedule. It's been a grind, a lot of ups and downs. And to get mentally refocused. <laughs> he says that, Jonathan. I, I, I'm, I haven't went back and counted. But I'm pretty confident he says that in almost every single time he has a microphone in front of him. Yeah, so I don't he know. He talks if he, about the tough schedule. I'm I'm personally tired of hearing it. I don't know if he thinks that helps his argument um, with the fans. Um, let's also say this: he's right on on a couple things there. Um, Two thousand miles away, missing key players. We who's before we played that. We talked about that. Uh, kudos to him. Kudos to his staff. Kudos to the players. He's hundred percent right. He's also right on the health. The second bye week was seemingly put in so that it would allow teams to get help. There's some injuries right there. Mm-hmm. Uh, some of them minor, some of them serious. And so it's a good time to hit a pause button, get healthy. Um, and I'd also agree that a season is mentally draining. But at some point, you have to stop talking about the fans. You have to stop talking about the tough schedule. Coos. You made a really good point. I think we were all fair. We it seems like we talk for forty five minutes and then we record for yeah. forty five minutes. Yeah, and, and if we would record <laughs> what we talk about before the show, it might even be better. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Um, how many times did you hear Nick Saban talk about how difficult his schedule? Uh, you just don't hear it. These guys, man, in the in the SEC, and these guys, they grind each week. And you made a great point, Coos. You said. Coaches want to be in the SEC. Like yeah. they literally leave other teams, other schools, other conferences to go to the SEC to play the best week in and week out. They don't they don't hide from it. No. They don't hide from it. They run to it. And to hear it used as a as a brace every week to kind of put the band-aid on the wound. It gets old. Um, it gets old, and I think, and I think that is part of the frustration with the West Virginia fan base, right? Is that they're tired, they're tired, yeah. and um, I just feel like it would be um, it would serve him well to stop talking about the fans and to stop bringing up yep. the tough schedule and yep. just concentrate on the football side yep. of it. Yeah. I- in our, in our conversation before the show, I, you know, you hit it on the head. It's pretty much what I said. And it, and it makes it sound, but to add on to that, it makes it sound like he does it. Do, do you want, do you want to be West Virginia? Do you want it to be known as a big time program? 
or do you want it to be known as a school that runs from big games? Just we're just little old West Virginia. We can't play. We can't play Alabama. We we've yeah. got to get them off the schedule. We can't. We 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 play two power two power four teams not conference every year. We've got to stop doing that. I, what kind of program do you want to be? Because if that's the type of program he wants, then we need to get him out. Because yeah. that ain't what I want as a as a fan. I don't want to be known as the, we need to get back to a West Virginia team that wants to be a top 10, 15 team, top 25, at least almost every year. We need to be competing yeah. for conference championships at least once every two or three years. We need to be winning seven, eight, nine, 10 games every year, not making yeah. excuses about injuries and schedules and referees. So he hasn't talked about that in a couple of weeks. Thank goodness. <laughs> uh, well, actually, I think he did Monday, but it it wasn't quite as bad. Yeah. I mean, it's just it's one excuse after the other, man. And I, if you if you want, I mean, I just I don't know, man. It's just like it's almost like do you, do you even want to be at West Virginia? Do you even think you can win? It's almost at the point now. I feel like he doesn't even have enough confidence to think they they can do any better than what they're doing. It it almost yeah. feels like he is accepting who they are, what they are, and, and is just, and and just wants to make excuses as to why they can't do any better, man. And I just that is not what we need yeah. leading our program is that type of mindset. Now maybe maybe I'm reading too much into it and, and maybe I'm just coming at it from a from because I've I've been extremely pessimistic the last few days, man. Yeah. Uh over this. And I, everything I it's like I'm I'm seeing everything through that lens. So maybe I'm off base here. But man, I just it really irritates the crap out of me that he says these things like West Virginia is supposed to be just then get, then go down to the G five man and, and call it a day. If that's what you want, if you want to be, if you want to compete with Marshall, if you want to compete with East Carolina or, or Ohio or Ohio, you not Ohio state. Yeah. No, he can't do that. He can't yeah. get them off the schedule. Uh, I mean, what do you want to be? You want to play big boy football? Or yeah. do you want to play Pop Warner football? And I don't I'm, I don't mean to call G5 teams Pop Warner. That wasn't my point there. But, but week in, week out. Yeah, yeah. What do you want to do, Neil? Do you want to be a big-time program or not? Make up – because because if you don't want, then West Virginia needs to find somebody else. That yeah. Does. That's how yeah. – and that's the way I feel about it. And I like I said, I, I hate to go on a rant, but it, I'm really passionate about that. And I, I think that is just not the mindset we need especially today. Like to me, it's almost like he's doing the exact opposite of what he should be doing and saying right now. <laughs> yeah. Like, and I, yeah. and I, and I think you're right. A couple things can be true. Um, one, you, I don't think, I don't think we're necessarily overreacting because it's not the first time. Right. I mean, this isn't the first time a coach on West Virginia, Neil Brown specifically has put his foot in his mouth. If we're just been open, mm -hmm. we talked about it earlier. Jordan Leslie, simple fixes, easy fixes. The sky's not falling. I'm not ready to hit the panic button. And then the whole, are you having fun? And it, 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 it's not the first time. So I think when something happens over and over and over, it, if nothing else, because it leaves the door open for misinterpretation and or reading too much into it. So what's the solution there? Don't keep opening the door. <laughs> yeah. You know, at some point he's just, they just have to stop. Um, and, and this seems like a good time to revert back to my comments whenever he made the, are you having fun comment? I said it then and it rings true today. I believe. Do I think that Neil, cares more about the fans having fun than he does winning. I don't do. I think he meant what he said that day. I don't think he meant it the way it was interpreted per se. However, when you are three and 17 now against top 25 teams, when you're barely over 500 in six years, I think he's lost eight in a row or maybe nine to top 25 teams, when you blew a 10-point lead under five minutes to go against Pitt in the backyard brawl, when you're 0-3 against ranked teams this year, all three at home, 
you do not get the benefit of the doubt. And my advice, my unsolicited advice, because he doesn't really care what I think, if you don't want the fans to, um, if you want the fans to realize that you're in the middle of the race, win football games. If you don't want fans to um, do the whole billboard thing, and that's another argument I'm not necessarily agreeing with it, but I'm just saying voicing the frustration, win football games. If you don't want fans to overreact or misinterpret the are you having fun, here's an idea, beat Iowa State. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Neil has the opportunity to change this. Instead, it's kind of we're just spinning in a never-ending cycle of, of 500 football, beating teams that we should, losing to teams that are maybe better and or ranked six years. And – um and so I just feel like that it leaves the door open for misinterpretation or reading it wrong or whatever the terminology would be. And I'm not saying that you or I are or that other fans might be that are upset, but but you absolutely are not going to get the benefit of the doubt when that is your record, not over one, not over two, not over four, but six seasons in Morgantown. You're just not getting the benefit of the doubt. So you need to just kind of keep the fans out of it going forward. The only only thing he can do to help anything is to win. That's it. That is it. And he and, that, and he's going to, have to do that at this point next year if he's back because I yeah. think this year is I don't I, he has no goodwill left. He's just got to go out there, just get through the interview, talk football, and get out. Like, like he just that's all he needs yeah. to do. But anyway, uh, before you go, Jonathan, before we quit, I know this is a football show, but I'd like to talk a little bit of hoops with you if you don't mind. I don't uh, mind. We got basketball season starting uh, on Monday as we record this. Uh, Robert Morris comes to Morgantown for the very first official game of the Darren DeVries era of West Virginia basketball. I just want to real quick talk about what are your thoughts going into the season? What are your expectations for this 2024-25 team? Yeah, so I think I can speak for myself and really a lot of people um, surrounding the program, the fan base. is. Um, I love Bob Huggins. Thankful for everything he did here. Um, but I'm excited for a new chapter. Um, you know, we, it's funny, we're having this conversation now because we just talked about what's the key to get everybody off your back is to win. But then what I'm about to say is you're, you're almost, um, DeVries has let off the hook a little bit this year, if that makes sense. I mean, listen, you, you got to win some games, right? But I think there's just an excitement, right, of a new a new staff, a new head coach, a new roster, um, a new era, if you will, of Mountaineer basketball. Um, so I think it's going to be a good year, and it and it comes off of a a rocky last season uh, with the hug situation, Josh Eilert coming in temporarily. My goodness, Kuz, you want to talk about a disaster of a season? Uh, that was last year's basketball team i mean it was up mm -hmm. it was down it was it was a mess um so i think there's a lot of anticipation looking forward to it um i will i will also say um you didn't pay me to say this but i'd encourage everybody to watch you guys i'm really excited to watch it hope i can maybe get involved with you a little bit um for a couple things here or there you guys are already killing it and the season's not even started yet so um if you are watching this because of me, uh, which you're probably not, but if you are, um, make sure you follow all that because just really excited. Yeah, there's the schedule. Um, and whew, there's some good games on there too. So excited about the team. You know, we've seen one exhibition. We've seen one against mm -hmm. the University of Charleston, and I don't know that I've ever been so excited to watch an exhibition game. Um they did do a secret. You'll notice I said we've seen one exhibition. Mm -hmm. There was a right. secret scrimmage close to us. If we yes. if we would have been able to sneak in for the day, yeah, we, we um we dropped the ball on that. Um yep. be a spy in the in the bleachers. Um against Wake Forest. Um 
everything I hear um, on that says West Virginia won that game, struggled early, but maybe won that game and played well, uh, overcame a rocky shooting start early, but they looked really athletic, uh, played well defensively. Um, so, yeah, just excited about a, a new era. Um, and looking at that schedule, uh, several things pop out early. Yeah, I mean, you got number six Gonzaga uh, in that – the I think it's the Bahama tournament they're playing – Bahamas tournament they're playing in this year. I can't remember which one it is for sure. Uh, my gosh, sit number 16. They got the backyard brawl on the 15th of November, third game of the season. I mean, holy cow, look at that, Jonathan. What, Kansas. What, I mean, yeah, and they first – they opened Big 12 play on the road at Kansas. Welcome to the Big 12, Darren DeVries. Happy <laughs> freaking New Year, buddy. <laughs> look, because look at the date of that game. It's December thirty first. Yeah, uh, yeah. But uh, in Lawrence. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. But anyway, just I mean, what what in your in your do you have a number of wins in your mind that you think is realistic for this team? Yeah, that's a great question. Probably one that I need to. Um, well, I'm, maybe I'm lowering that number as you scroll <laughs> scroll that schedule. Um, yeah. I mean, what gets it done? I, I don't quite know that it's. Um, I don't quite know that it's. It's a good question. You, you you know you did well as a host when you kind of maybe caught me off guard. Um, okay. I think twenty is maybe high. I think fifteen's maybe a little low. Would I be crazy to say somewhere in that seventeen to eighteen range? Um, Not crazy at all. Uh, and, and again, that's, um, Ooh, yeah, that's some tough competition. Uh, just, 17 just look, to 18. Yeah, that's good. I, I, I think I said 15 before I ever looked at the schedule, but I mean, I'm counting, you know, if, if you, if they win all their bye games, Robert Morris, Matt, UMass one, two, if they win the backyard brawl, that's three or Iona, uh, and uh, North Carolina <clears throat> central, that's what five, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, there's another six, one. Mercyhurst seven. <clears throat> Oklahoma State is below them in the standings. There's eight. Uh, Colorado's below them, I think. That's nine. Arizona State, look, they, oh. I mean, they look oh. terrible. There's oh. 10. Uh, Utah's 11. Utah again, 12. Maybe they get a win over TCU. There's 13. I mean, I. Yeah, and it is worth UCF. noting, too, that that's that, that, um, it's not going to display it there. Um, I should know, but the the tournament they're playing in with Gonzaga, mm -hmm. they're going to play an extra couple games. Oh, yeah. I don't right. I don't know that yeah. schedule, but the last I remember, that tournament's stacked. Yeah, it <laughs> is. It is. You're right. I don't know why they don't have the other opponents on there, but you're right. Yeah. It is stacked. There's there's. Uh, I'm trying to remember who some of the team. There's another Big Twelve team in it, if I'm not mistaken. Actually. So if I'm if I'm just reading this. Um, um, and I'm not counting Big 12 play, and I'm not counting postseason. I think a good number. I think a good number. Who's 17? And I think they get in the tournament at 17. In that conference, I would say so. Yeah, I'll be honest with you, man. I like the way. I don't. You know, the travel's going to be tough because they play a lot of the Western teams twice. Yeah, man, they play the one. They play a lot of teams who were below them in the preseason standings. They play Utah twice. I think Utah was below them, if I'm not mistaken, uh, or or at least near them, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. UCF. Yeah. They play UCF. Uh, and I'm going to state the obvious here, Coos. But if you'll go to the very top, um, you know, you you you've, you have to win the Robert Morris is at home, the Massachusetts, uh, I own as though North Carolina central, you don't, you don't have much of a leeway to stub your toe, nope. um, on some of those, um, should wins, I guess maybe we should word it that way. Um, because yeah, I mean, um, that's, that's tough. Georgetown's in a, in a, in a tough spot. They've never really quite got that program back up and running. Although, believe they're supposed to be a little better this year mm -hmm. um yeah so when i look at just maybe five to seven of those games um you just can't afford to stub your toe there um Agreed. because you've got some i mean who is that below you got north carolina central 
Bethune Cookman, and is that Mercyhurst? Yeah, who the heck's that? Yeah, yeah. So, so you 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 can't you can't stumble on any of those three, and probably even take Georgetown in um, because then you've got Kansas, Oklahoma State. You think you're better than, but then Arizona. I mean, my goodness gracious, yeah. Um, and it's it is tough to go off of just one one scrimmage that we have seen against the University of Charleston. Um, I'm I, I, I'm concerned about um, West Virginia's lack of size. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a concern of mine. Um, so um, I, I I like their athleticism. Um, I think Javon Small is going to be a fan favorite. Yep. Um, sincere Tucker Harris DeVries, too. Sincere Harris, Tucker DeVries. Again, we're, we're, we're kind of going off of um, a University of Charleston exhibition game, so that's kind of grain of salt is right because we don't mm-hmm. quite know. But my goodness, Coos, they hustled. They played hard. They played energetic. Um, they looked like a team that would, when they rolled out on the floor, they were they were there to fight. They were there to play. Um, so – yeah, for, for me, just kind of just looking at that, um, 15 seems low, 20 seems high, so I'd, I'd go 17. Yeah. But but my that's goodness, that schedule, that schedule's yeah. tough. Goodness. I, I, I'm not even – I'm trying to – I'm keeping my expectations at around the 15, 16 mark. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, I don't anticipate them getting into into the NCAA tournament, but if they can get into the NIT in, in year one of the degrees, I'm sure the team's not going to be happy with that, uh, as they shouldn't be. But as a fan, you know, knowing that it's a new coach with a whole new roster, new coaching staff, you know, I'm trying to temper my expectations. I'm, I'll probably blow that uh, very early in the season when I when I get mad at a loss. But uh, yeah. like I always do. But yeah. man, I mean, um, the Charleston game what impressed me about them again against a Division two school. They moved the ball so well for a team that it. They didn't. They did not look like a team that had never played together before. I mean, they look like a yeah. well-oiled machine offensively, as far as the way they move the ball, the way they were cutting, yeah. pick and roll. I mean, they look. They looked better in game one of a, on, in an exhibition than last year's team looked by the end of the season. And that's a product of coaching. Yeah. Now, uh, last year's team, in their defense, they had roster changes constantly. All guys over leaving, the coming. So. I, it was a, just a tough – last year's team, I, I don't even – I give all those guys a pass, I'll be honest Oh, with you. yeah. It was brutal. Yeah. But, but from yeah. a basketball standpoint, quality on the floor, what what we were seeing, man, they look so well coached. They are – you can look mm-hmm. at that team and know that is a well-coached basketball team right there. Yeah, one of the words when you, you, you'd you ask me that and you popped the schedule up, um, I just kind of wrote down the first word that, that come to my mind, and, and I wrote stability. Um, that was just kind of the first word kind of caught off guard that came to my mind about the team. Um, you know, especially after last year, just having the stability of a new coach. Um, uh, yeah. So I think it's a product of coaching that they looked, I mean, they look like they've been together for several years. Um, now that obviously remains to be seen when you run into Kansas and Gonzaga and, and, and Arizona and Houston, um, but I think there's a new level of excitement uh, for this team, uh, for this program. And um, from everything we see so far, um, uh, Darren DeVries seems to be the, be a great hire (laughs) um, by, by Ren Baker, which gets my mind rambling again. Um, uh, Maybe a whole nother episode there, but um, seems to be a great hire so far. And um, just excited, yep. just excited, Agreed, really excited man. about the about the future. And um, it's going to be a fun year. And again, you you, you can't go zero oh, and whatever, um, but I think the fans are going to be a little bit lenient this year after last year and 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 Coach Devery's first year. Um, and um, and I'll bet you anything, there's going to be quite an upset or two in Morgantown this Almost year. Yeah, and uh, that's going to be fun. So, yeah, I'm, I'm 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 really hoping to get to a game or two. I try to get to yeah. at least one a year up there, uh, so I'm hoping I can. Uh, I really enjoyed when they tried to get one in Charleston. Me too, um, man. 
you know, and I, I don't know the ins and outs of that, but for for some southern West Virginia people, and especially in that Charleston area, but you know, for for folks like us that are, um, you know, and there's such a contingent of West Virginia, you know, they used to play in the Civic Center Coliseum, whatever you want to call it now, um, and they they packed it. Um, so I wish especially they would when, do that, especially when they played Marshall. Yeah. Yeah, so wish they would do that, but yeah, I'd love to love to catch a game. And and I know we're not talking about it now, but it but it's a it's a passion of mine, and I know it's a passion of yours. Um, let's not forget the women's program yes, either. Absolutely, um, you know, as a as a father uh, whose whose daughter plays, um, uh, my wife played. I, I have a huge. I coached it. I coached. Yeah, it. yeah, I just, yeah. Just coached it up until this past spring, man. Yeah, I have a I have a. a, a a uh, huge fan of, of, of their game and um, they're going to be exciting. Yeah. Uh, and so um, really excited about, about watching that program and, um, and following them and, and giving them the coverage that they deserve. Yep, absolutely. They do deserve it. And uh, I'm going to try my best to cover them on Hoops from the Hills or, or find somebody who can because they deserve it. They deserve mm-hmm. it. Yep. All right, listen, uh, Jonathan, man, it's been another great show. I appreciate it. Um, just real quick, tell everybody again where they can find you and your work and, and how they interact with you. Yeah, it's all at X. Uh, Twitter, X, um, at Jonathan K. Martin, J-O-N-A-T-H-A-N-K Martin. Uh, I try and keep it simple. Uh, I do it everything there uh, on X. Um Articles there, podcast links there. This uh, episode here is linked there. Uh, we even link a lot of your work over at your site uh, over there. Um, you can hit the subscribe button uh, and uh, support the work there. Um, and uh, there's some behind the scenes VIP stuff there uh, uh, as well. So uh, pretty much a one-stop shop for a lot of West Virginia. Yeah, and and I, you know I forgot to plug your podcast earlier. He, Jonathan does have his own podcast, the Jonathan K Martin or the Jonathan yep. Martin podcast, I think it's called. Yeah, just kind of uh, uh, ramble about some leftovers, kind of from from the week. Um, and so, yeah, uh, and there's links to all that um, on uh, on my page, so awesome. you can go there and find it all. Yep, awesome, awesome, Jonathan. Well, listen, uh, we love doing this every week. Uh, the bye weeks are kind of fun, actually. I enjoy yeah. changing it up a bit, you know, doing something a little yeah. different. But next week we'll we will be back to our three, two, one. Uh count call it the I don't know, countdown, whatever you want to call it. The uh three keys, two position battles, and one key player. Uh we'll, we'll be back back to doing that next week and yeah. uh before the Cincinnati game. But in the meantime, uh check us out. Check out more shows here on the channel. Check out Who's from the Hills. Check out Jonathan Martin Podcast. Check out X. You'll find us all there. Thanks again for tuning in. Let's go Mountaineers. Q Country Roads, baby. <laughs>